One, one thing that I don't see is um, anybody giving a presentation about Agenda 21 actually showing you parts of it. You know, I hear books about Agenda 21, I hear videos about Agenda 21, but I was like, well, doggone, I better read Agenda 21 and see what's really in this thing. Kind of like the Health Care Affordability Act. I read about 450 pages of that thing, and buddy, I was ready. I was ready to just start throwing stuff. You know, I, was, I couldn't take it anymore. I said it down. I was like, I've read, and I've seen all I need to see. <laughs> uh, Agenda 21 has a lot of different terms as associated with it. I put Project Earth next to it because that's the latest and greatest name for it. Uh, but you've probably heard the term sustainable. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, green. Green. Yeah. Uh, you've got. Um, uh, regional and sub-regional cooperation. Oh yeah, it gets deep. But um, you, you've heard all the buzz phrases. And what I've done in here is whenever I got to a buzz phrase and in some of the excerpts, I highlighted it. So you're going to see just how repetitive this is over and over again. <clears throat> all right. Why do we care in the first place? Our nation was founded on an idea. Our Declaration of Independence represents a group of ideas. And those ideas that certain inalienable rights are granted by Almighty God, and that life, liberty, and property and the pursuit of your happiness are rights held by individuals. The idea behind Agenda 21 is that rights are held collectively or communally, and their freedoms are granted by government on behalf of the collectives. Okay? There's a difference between liberty and freedom. Freedoms are given to you by, by government, and basically granted to you, loaned to you maybe, for good behavior. Liberties are given to you by God and they're inalienable. They're, they're, they're not, you can't put a lien against them. Collective rights trump that of the individual. That's, that's an, those are two essential, essential components of Agenda 21. If you understand that, you just got all however many chapters there, I can't remember. Um, I'm just going to read through some of this. It's boring, but um, I think it's important that you know some of it. In the preamble, 1.1, the very beginning of Agenda 21, humanity stands at a, at a defining moment in history we are confronted with a perpetuation of disparities between and within nations, a worsening of poverty, hunger, ill health and illiteracy, and the continuing deterioration of ecosystems, there's buzzword, on which we depend for our well-being, buzzword. However, integration of environment and development concerns and greater attention to them will lead to the fulfillment of basic needs, improved living standards for all, better protected and managed ecosystems, and a safer, more prosperous future. No nation can achieve this on its own, but together we can. In a global partnership for sustainable development. All right, Preamble 1.3. Agenda 21 addresses the pressing problems of today and also aims at preparing the world for the challenges of the next century. It reflects a global consensus. That's, 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 who would argue with this stuff, guys? And political commitment at the highest level on development and environmental cooperation. Its successful implementation is first and foremost the resp responsibility of government. Catch that? Yeah, it's government's job to do this, not yours, right? Okay. National strategies, plans, policies, and processes are crucial in achieving this. International cooperation should support and supplement such national efforts. In this context, the United Nations system has a key role to play. Other international, regional, and sub-regional organizations are also called upon to contribute to this effort. The broadest public participation and the active involvement of the non-governmental organizations and other groups should also be encouraged. I'm giving you some hand signals here. Pay attention to this stuff, you know. Okay. Chapter 4, changing consumption patterns. We're going to control your consumption patterns now. Because your consumption patterns are killing the earth, okay? So you've got to relearn how to live your life. And we're going to show you. 
consideration should also be given to the present concepts of economic growth and the need for new concepts of wealth and prosperity which allow higher standards of living through changed lifestyles and are less dependent on Earth's finite resources and more in harmony with Earth's carrying capacity. It should be reflected in the evolution of new systems of national accounts and other indicators of sustainable development. That's it right there, guys. You know? Um, environmentally sound pricing, 4.24. Environmental costs of the consumption of energy, materials, natural resources, and the generation of waste. Significant changes in consumption and production patterns. See where it's all coming from, guys? Your consumption patterns, production patterns environmental, cooperative efforts. All these buds words are leading us somewhere. 4.25, some progress has begun in the use of appropriate economic instruments to influence consumer behavior. These instruments include environmental charges and taxes. These are good, these are good things, by the way, okay? Remember, good. <laughs> environmental charges and taxes, deposit and refund systems, etc. And that etc is a big thing. That's a, that's a lot of etc, guys. Okay, this process should be encouraged in the light of country-specific conditions. We have a franchise. That's what this is. It's a franchise. Okay, and I'm going to show you their sales system in a second. Here, go ahead. Four point two six. Governments and private sector organizations should promote positive attitudes towards sustainable consumption. Don't let guys like me talk about it. <laughs> that's basically what that's saying. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Human settlement development. Metropolitan areas, ex oh, this is a big one. Metropolitan areas extend over the boundaries of several political and or administrative entities, counties and municipalities. Even though they conform to a continuous urban system, the Charlotte metropolitan region, for example. Raleigh metropolitan region. In many cases, this political heterogeneity problem um, hinders the implementation of a comprehensive environmental management program. The problem is, is these things called borders. This stuff called jurisdiction and authority. You know, we need to blur these lines a little bit, get them out of the way, so that we can unify everybody under the same umbrella and the same franchise model. Go ahead, boss. Environment and Development Decision Making, Chapter 8. 8.3 says the overall objective is to improve or restructure the decision making process so that consideration of socio economic and environmental issues is fully integrated and a broader range of public participation is assured. And it goes on and on and on. Go back. The, um, one thing I wanted to point out here is you have socio-economic and environmental issues. You've heard ad nauseum the phrase social justice, right? Social justice. Social equity. We're going to make things equal by making things unequal in the name of social equity. Well, take that same model and apply it to the environment. Now we have environmental justice, environmental equity. That's actually mentioned in it. Um, Go ahead, both. Planning and management of land, chapter ten. This is where this is what I see on a daily basis over in, in, in the town government. Um, we have a planning department. It is re there are some things required by federal law that a municipality must do. I did not know that at first. I was like, why can't we just scrap that? Because it's against federal law. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And you mean I'm mandated to be in charge of something like this? And if I don't, there's federal consequences. I almost asked him, what's the consequences? <laughs> Can we afford it? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, planning and management of land. The broad objective is to facilitate allocation of land due to the uses that provide the greatest sustainable benefits and promote the transition to a sustainable and integrated management of land resources. We're going to put you in a transition phase. We're going to, we're going to, bring you home, bring you into the fold, gradually. Protected areas, private property rights, 
the rights of indigenous people and their communities and other local communities and the economic role of women in agriculture, rural development, among other issues, should be taken into account. So don't think that we don't care about your pro private property rights. You need to forget about that right now. It's all good. This is right there. <laughs> Governments at the appropriate level with the support of regional and international organizations should ensure that policies and policy instruments support the best possible land use and sustainable management of land resources. Encourage the principle, okay, uh, 10.6, that was 10.6, 10.6 paragraph E, this one jumped out at me. Encourage the principle of delegating policy making to the lowest level of public authority consistent with effective action and locally driven approach, i.e. aim your franchise model at the local governments because your town council guys are dumb as a bag of hammer won't know any better, okay? They don't know the essential, basic fundamentals that, that, that determine proper government. They don't understand the role of proper government, many of them. And, and as this gentleman pointed out, when you go to these state-sponsored education things, ethics, North Carolina School of Government, bless their hearts, Defines ethics as basically two things. I'm going to slum the whole class up. You're going to have to take it if you get elected. Uh, ethics are this. Um, uh, perception is reality. That's number one. And um, right and wrong are pretty much determined by majority opinion. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's that bad. So we're gonna we're gonna take those guys after we get them teach them right and wrong. We're gonna we're gonna start working on them with this stuff, and then they grow up and they be uh, congressmen and presidents and things like that. You know, so we have to be careful. Just because there's, I always thought Agenda Twenty One had to go through Congress to get to me. I was like, how how could, how could this really affect me? It's a, number one. It's the UN blue helmets. <laughs> okay. I don't, I'm not really worried about those guys, you know? They can't pass a law internationally that would affect me without going through Congress. Baloney. There is no legal, by the way, there is no legal binding anything in force to make us do this, okay? It's all pushed on us through um, fancy marketing, really. Um, go ahead. Okay, and this is how it's done. Oh, before I go any further, does anybody have any questions? I know I ran through this stuff, but basically I just wanted to take the building blocks of Agenda 21, give you an idea of what it's about. Everybody straight so far? Everybody good? Okay. Non-governmental organizations. These are the guys that tried to try to take the idea and they go to door knocking on the door uh, yes the uh, town of whateverville have we got a deal for you buddy we're gonna make your town clean healthy you'll be cutting edge and people are gonna look to you say oh we, we, we just have to move there your developers hear about that and they're like oh we need to do that your realtors are saying oh heck yeah yeah that'll help us sell a lot of stuff we have shiny buildings and, 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 and clean communities. Um, so let's talk about non-governmental organizations. ICLE, International Criminal Law, uh, I can't remember what the old one was. You, you remember what it is? International Council on Land, I, I like the other one, International uh, Criminal Criminal Law something. Okay, Local Governments for Sustainability is the new term they're using. Um, and off their own website, <clears throat> what is ICLE? ICLE Local Governments for Sustainability is the leading local, local network devoted to local governments engaged in sustainability, climate protection, and clean energy initiatives. In the United States, ICLE USA is the recognized leader in its field, creating cutting edge tools and establishing national standards. They're the hub. They are what 
draws the rest of them, organizes the national standards, sets the pace for the rest of them. I think at this level, the organization's pretty, pretty much. It's, it's safe to say that these people are bad dudes. Okay, they're 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 probably they know what they're doing. Beyond this level, I got to tell you, I think there's a lot of people who honestly, genuinely believe they are doing a good thing. They go to college, they get brainwashed, they have, they are told um, that this saves the earth. They're fed a lot of junk science. They don't question it. So, when you talk to someone, try to remember that they, they, they genuinely in their heart think they're doing a good thing. And when you challenge them, um, or you question them, try to keep that in the back of your mind and keep your presentation civil. So I'm gonna tell you, nothing will shut you down faster then when you go tenfold hatter on somebody. <laughs> All right, let's go from here. Okay. <clears throat> ICLE defines different kinds of cities. They actually, they classify everything, but they, they actually define sustainable city. It took me a year and a half to figure out what the heck this phrase meant. I still don't like it, but at least I know. A sustainable city is marked by a green economy, a healthy, happy community, smart infrastructure, and are biodiverse, low carbon, resilient, and resource efficient. So we are a, our economy in our city is green. It is determined by environmental factors. We are a healthy and happy community. Because government has taken the time to, def to figure out what it takes to make us healthy and happy and have determined uh, a course of action. I'm sure they had a lot of focus groups involved in determining what makes us healthy and happy. Smart infrastructure. Is asphalt smart? <laughs> I mean, this is, um, this is talking about integrating the user with the product. Um, I haven't done a lot of homework on that, but I think that would be a fun project to do someday. If you ever want to look, into, look at smart infrastructure, how everything is tied together, your smart meters. Um, you know, I was going to say, you know, Agenda 21 isn't so much about your toaster oven talking to your power meter and telling the NSA, you know, if your toast is burnt. But <laughs> the technology is almost there, folks. So I really can't say that. Um, go ahead. Resource efficient cities, smart urban infrastructure, it all ties under that first category. They just have it subdivided as to what level you are in the whole thing. Um, and, and of course, the end game is a healthy and happy community. That's what we're here for, Agenda 21. We want to make you healthy and happy. Um, a healthy and happy community looks beyond gross domestic product growth. We're not worried about the economy. But we're clean. We're healthy, inclusive, peaceful, and safe. It is where people enjoy quality life and good governance, education, infrastructure, and culture. I laughed my tail off last night. I was looking at some, some old George Carlin. I'm not a big fan of his morality, but I really like his take on government. And he was describing the earth isn't going anywhere. We are. Well, in that diatribe, he basically said this first sentence. That uh, they don't care about the environment. They just want a nice, shiny, clean city to live in. <laughs> American Planning Association. All right, now we're getting a little closer to home. We're almost at your front door because these guys, these guys train the people who determine your property rights. APA, the, their mission is to provide leadership in the development of vital communities by advocating excellence in planning, promoting education, and citizen empowerment. Okay, now it's getting interesting. And providing the tools and support necessary to meet the challenges of growth and change. All right. So the APA 
They develop solutions to address emerging issues that our communities, our members, and the association will face in the 21st century. Planning is embraced as an essential means of efficiently allocating public resources and sustaining vital communities. That's key right there. We're allocating resources. What business is it of yours how my resources are allocated? <laughs> That's what I ask my planning department. Uh, you get funny stares when you ask them stuff like that. Um, APA members are leaders in initiatives regarding the economy, environment, and equity. Bingo, right there. Got it all in one, on one sentence. Where we have economic factors, environmental factors, and social factors all wrapped up into one. That's Agenda 21. Um, go ahead, boss. They have a green team. It's like Delta force or something, only green. Uh, as the independent not-for-profit educational, okay, basically what this is saying is if you're a member of the APA, we want you to lead by example. All the stuff we're requiring people to do, if you don't do it, they're not going to do it. That's what they're about. American Institute of Certified Planners, now we're getting real close to your front door. The AICP is who your town planner goes to to be a certified town planner. They probably won't be hired as a town planner if they're not AICP certified. It's the American Planning Association's professional institute. It's an arm of the APA. Providing recognized leadership nationwide in the certification of professional planners, ethics, professional development, planning education, and the standards of planning practice. To become a certified planner, APA members must meet certain education and experience requirements and pass a written examination. We don't want you messing up and giving people their property rights. No, I'm just kidding. Not really, though. Um, now, the interesting thing about the APA is if you look at their, I believe it's the APA, if you look at their uh, board of directors their on the national level, one of them is formerly an ICLEI director, ICLEI bigwig. One of them is a former uh, some other organization bigwig. So they always cross them over and intermingling here. Go ahead. League of Municipalities. Okay, so the APA takes care of your planning department. Your planning department is educated and set on the straight and narrow by the APA, as far as Agenda 21 goes. Your League of Municipalities is actually an interesting animal because it does some, some beneficial things to municipalities. They provide services. They help you get your insurance. You know, if, if a town needs a certain kind of insurance or a certain kind of legal help or something, they have services for that. So it's hard to tell people, we don't need this. You don't really have to, but it's going to be a hard sell to get rid of them. Um, so they do some good things. It's a nonpartisan federation of more than 540 cities, towns, and villages in North Carolina. They advocate, they advocate for municipalities at the state and federal level. They do lobbying on behalf of municipalities. So if you see a state law that's going to limit a city's authority or power, you can bet that these guys are standing in the faces of those state legislators saying, don't you dare. <laughs> Provide a forum for the exchange of ideas among municipal officials. In other words, they have these gatherings and everything every once in a while up in Raleigh where you can... Uh, you can organize ideas and they promote excellence and efficiency in municipal government. Define good. <laughs> Provide services and information that will help municipal officials meet the needs of their citizens. They have some informative things. So, But then I get to their mission. The mission of the League is to enhance the quality of life. Quality of life. What makes my life quality? What makes it good? Freedom. Yeah. So why do I need government to determine it for me? Um, in municipalities through excellent municipal governance. So excellent municipal government governance begets quality of life. You see where I'm going with all this. It's all the same stuff over and over again. Providing member services that strengthen their support, excellence, and municipal government. Engaging members, staff, and stakeholders in representing municipal issues and interests. One of the mysteries of the universe right now to me, as an elected official, is what is a stakeholder? 
I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. And I don't think anybody else does. They're scared to tell you that. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> planning and land use. Municipal planning authority must be maintained for sound growth, long-range planning, and growth management. This is still League of Municipalities. Uh, Long-range municipal planning is an essential aspect of municipal health and economic viability. <coughs> Vibrant, well-planned cities are the economic engines of the state. <clears throat> okay, Attracting new businesses and industries, so we're going to attract them with property regulations and higher taxes. Uh, while providing the quality of life expected by residents in and around municipalities. Public participation and private property rights are key elements of growth management. No joke. <laughs> what are you managing when you're managing growth? You're managing your land use. When you manage land use, you manage property rights. Um, you can take a lot of this stuff and break it down, and it really tells you what they're doing right in front of your face. Um, public participation and private property rights, key elements of growth management. Does that really mean what it sounds like it means? So if growth management is managing your rights, you don't have property rights, and then we go back to our liberty versus freedoms. Our property rights aren't liberties. They're freedoms granted to us by our government. If you don't believe it, don't pay property tax. See what happens to your house. Now, that brings up a good question. One thing I'd like to ask my government up in Raleigh one of these days, if I ever get up there and they let me in, um, if, the, if I don't pay my bank, they take my house. I have a mortgage, which is a dead debt instrument. That's the whole, yeah, mandrake mechanism, bank stuff. That's another day. Um, if I don't pay my taxes, the government takes it. In fact, if the bank takes my house and doesn't pay the government taxes, I'll take it from them. So the government owns it more than the bank, the bank owns it more than me. Why do I have to insure it? But anyway, um, that's just a little, another mystery. That's kind of like a, a, a stakeholder. I have no idea, you know. Necessary tools for planning include the ability to zone. Zoning is how they regulate land rights. Now there's an argument to be made. Well, what about the guy that wants to put a nuclear power plant in his backyard? Let's just go to this ridiculous, you know, end of it. What about the guy that wants to put a hog farm in a, in a neighborhood? <laughs> There's some neighborhoods I was t I'd be tempted, but um, <laughs> but uh, you know, there's there's some good discussions to be had on zoning. So I'm not dissing zoning 100 percent yet. I'm working on it though. Um, urban development and economic development. Economic development, let's talk about that for about 10 seconds. Development means what? To build, to coordinate, to put together. The economy? What dictates the economy? What determines the economy? What's the best driving force of the economy? The market. People buying and selling. Government, that really doesn't have to have anything to do with that. In fact, the less they have to do with it, the better. As I said during a Tea Party speech one day, government, if you want to help us, there is one thing you could do. Get out of the way. <laughs> go ahead. All right, environmental protection, they go on and on. But you see the red. It's all your buzzwords. It's all there. It's all there. <coughs> and we're going to get to um, your public participation here in a sec. Go ahead. I'm not going to bore you to death and read all that. Central Line of Council of Government. When I was elected, they appointed me uh, as the Central Line of Council of Government delegate for Indian Trail. All right? I was Indian Trail's delegate. Oh, I thought I was just something else. And I was like, okay, what's well, a delegate? I can represent Indian Trail. I can do that. I get there. CCOG, they're dedicated to helping this region find innovative solutions to both existing and future challenges facing Greater Charlotte and to unifying the region's collective resources, remember that? To help grow the economy and jobs, improve the quality of life, and control the cost of government. We are on a different, different um, non-governmental organization. 
it's a different one now, but we're seeing the same things. Regional councils, they exist in some fashion across the country, although naming conventions can differ. In some areas, these organizations are known as councils of government, planning commissions, or planning associations. At least they're more honest. Um, in North Carolina, each regional council is also designated by a letter, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Connect our future. Is that the one you're asking about earlier? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I resigned as the, uh, <laughs> as the delegate. Um, Connect our future is a process in which communities, counties, businesses, educators, nonprofits, and other organizations work together to grow jobs in the economy improve the quality of life, and control the cost of government. This project will create a regional growth framework developed through the extensive community engagement and built on what communities identify as existing conditions, future plans and needs, potential strategies, and supported by a Department of Housing and Urban Deve Development Sustainable Communities Grant. Isn't that nice? So what happens with federal money? What do you get with it? Strings attached. Yeah, baby. Uh-huh. Uh, public and private matching resources. They'll engage the public, private, and nonprofit organizations across the 14-county region. So we have just blurred the lines on 14 counties, is what that's saying. Just like that one part of Agenda 21. Um, it's guided by the following core values. Strong, diverse economy. Okay. <clears throat> I like that, you know. Sustainable, well-managed growth. You just lost me, babe. You just lost me. A safe and healthy environment. That's how safe and healthy, social environment, it's all just one big happy family. Increase collaboration among jurisdictions. Get rid of them borders. Enhance social equity. High quality educational opportunities. Um, Go ahead. I mean, they, 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 have, they have just all these, it's, it, I'm just showing you that it's over and over again, it's the same thing in these things. The League of Municipalities works on your town manager, your town staff. They help educate the council. Your council of governments works on your municipal elected officials your county elected officials, and I believe they have some influence on your, your state level representation. So, and they're all fed the same thing in different ways. Now, what Council of Government does is it takes the elected official who is totally clueless, it makes them important. You've got in your hands this thing that's going to make your city shiny and happy and healthy. Well, my gosh, why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> you know? So, um, but then we have to work on the public because this public engagement we've been talking about we have to figure out how to do it <clears throat> so we hire a consultant group h and is currently doing Indian Trails uh, comprehensive town plan update okay I could go on for this on this for an hour I'm not going to bore you to death with it let me tell you HTB seems like a very nice business to do business with they're very competent, they're very skilled, very capable. So I'm not questioning so much H&TB, the company, but I mentioned them because of the next slide. This is a public participation toolbox. This is how we get the public in the room and, and, and <clears throat> make it look like they're part of the process. Adapted from International Association for Public Participation, IA. P2 uh, is another way they, they present themselves. Um, but on the very bottom, right, <laughs> HNTV Corporation. Okay, hand left again, hand left a little bit. You inform, you consult, you involve, you collaborate, right? And it gives you just ways, this is, this is a road map on how to do it. Um, go to the next one. Okay, this is what got my attention. I went to a, a town plan update. 
where our town plan was supposedly going to be crafted by participants in a survey in a public forum. I get there, I find out these charts are already made. The zoning map's already been done. 16 parks. Um, the roadways came later. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, this is already half done. Hey, maybe they're just polishing it up with some public input, right? And then I look around the room. I see members of a progressive political action committee. I see people who work for the town. And I see people walking around trying to look like they don't work for the consulting group. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> um, and there, there were some genuine people from the town who came out. Um, I wish I had those numbers, but over 20% of that room did not reside in the town of Indian Trail. <laughs> Taking the survey, they weren't even taxpayers. <laughs> Couldn't even vote for us. And they were telling us how to do the town. Who were they? You know? Um, well, then I saw the questions. And if you don't accept the premise of the question, you have multiple guess answers, right? It doesn't matter how you answer it, it's going to lead to the same end, <coughs> the same conclusion. Okay? So I was like, I've heard of this sort of thing in sales class, in marketing, back in college. They called it uh, leading questions. And um, where you can basically steer somebody's opinion on something by the questions you ask. I was like, dude, this is like witchcraft, man. Uh, uh, no, no, you can't do this. But I was looking around, there's only one other person that looked like they, they really, you know, this look you get on your face when you just want to tear something up, you know. And I figured me and her just couldn't take the rest of them. So I, I kind of dropped it for a while because I really didn't know what to do about it. Then I come across this, how to get public participation. I see this name here, Delphi, the Delphi technique. That's precisely what leading questions are part of. The Delphi technique is the way to make it appear like you're getting public input, right? And you lead to a predetermined outcome. And you actually put the word Delphi in the document? This, yeah, that's why I almost fell over. HNTV, the people putting together my town plan. I have this association for public participation, this professional organization that encourages public participation. And I see Delphi technique right there in black and white. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, folks. It's just, you can't make this stuff up. Go ahead. <clears throat> International Association for Public Participation. I, I, I've heard of these guys, but honestly, until last week, I never looked into them. Go ahead. Public participation, in quotes, means to involve those who are affected by a decision in the decision-making process. Makes sense. It promotes sustainable decisions by providing participants with the information they need to be involved in a meaningful way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Cooperate with your own <laughs> <laughs> That's a Laurel and Hardy skit right there. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So, Agenda 21 is the framework. It's the idea. There's this other animal called International Covenant for Environment and Development. Okay, it's in the draft form right now. Agenda 21 is the framework, just like the Declaration of Independence is the framework. The Constitution is the application. International Covenant is the application of the idea. What is a covenant? I got married to my wife. We stood before God and made a covenant. That's something you don't go around breaking. Okay? It's, an, it's a contract. It's enforceable, binding. It has terms, conditions. And what happens if you don't keep your contract? There's consequences. Here's the front page. I'm not going to bore you to death with this. I just wanted you to see what it looks like. You've probably seen this before. IUCN, 
ICEL, UN Congress, one big happy family. Okay? It has a preamble. I didn't really worry about this thing until I started thumbing through it. It's like, I, you know, if I quit reading stuff, I could probably sleep at night, you know? Um, okay, uh, preamble. What has a preamble? My gosh, my Constitution has a preamble, doesn't it? Okay. Parties to this covenant. Uh, go ahead and go to the next one. I want to I want to read something on the next page, and we'll 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 uh, leave it at that. Here you are. Okay, so after the preamble, we have part one, objective, Article one, part two, Article two. It's a constitution, folks. It's an international constitution set in the framework for international law. Um, go back. Hey, there you go. All right, the objective. This covenant provides a comprehensive legal framework with the aim of achieving environmental conservation, an indispensable foundation for sustainable development. It just never ends. Go ahead. So when you get some time, just do a Google search on draft international covenant on environment and development. So what do you do? Educate yourself. Educate others. Write, call, speak. Um, folks like myself, we're out there beating the war drums. You get tired after a while. You really need to know somebody cares. Um, folks that, that are willing to listen, again, respectfully, a lot of times they honestly believe in their hearts they're doing a good thing. Network with other people. you got to understand the ramifications. I recently have... I, I got a promotion. I used to be a right-wing extremist. Now I'm a cult leader. <laughs> um, prepare for the possibilities. What are the possibilities? You're going to be crucified if nothing else in the press. Okay? Thank God for that. I can handle that. I'm not bleeding. You know? My feelings get a little hurt, but I'm okay. Um, I want to tell you something about prepping. I don't care how much ammo and guns you have, I don't care how much food you have. I don't care how the community, okay, you sell your house, move out into the woods, nothing is going to do you as much good in a survival situation if this whole house of cards comes down than being spiritually prepared and on firm footing, having your relationship and your, right, your, right, your heart with God in the right place. Amen. If you don't get your house in order with God first, nothing else is going to matter. You're gonna, you, you're not gonna be able to function, okay? You're gonna freak out. You're gonna run this way. You're gonna run that way. You won't know what to do. Get your spiritual house in order. That if you only have your spiritual house in order, you don't need anything else. And I, I will, I will, I will stand on that all day long. You don't need your guns and ammo, your food, your water. If you got God, He takes care of the sparrows. <clears throat> I see it. Is that it? I ran out of slides. <laughs> well, no, nah, sorry, babe. I really appreciate it, y'all, letting me speak with you about this. I know it's a complicated issue. I tried to make it as interesting as I could, but um, one thing, one last thing, I want to share with you, again, is the only reason it's a threat is because it's contrary to the ideas that this government was founded on: individual liberty versus collective liberties, individual freedoms freedoms coming from God rather than f being just freedoms given by government as grants for good behavior and being compliant. And, uh, and bear in mind that we are all into this together. Don't discount your Democrats. Don't discount your Republicans. Don't discount your Libertarians. They have their hot buttons issues on the national level, but individually they are good people within all of those groups. I've met them. I've talked to the to ladies who are who are way down the left field on some things, but on this issue and one or two others, we jive and it works. So, so uh, I appreciate y'all. You have a fantastic rest of the day.